Good evening, this is Robert Scribbler. It is Saturday, May 19th, and what I'm going to be discussing with you this evening is a potential very severe polar warming event for late May that is now appearing in the GFS model forecast and why we should be cautious at this time with making uh, assertions that, that this event is, is inevitably on the way, but, but, but that we should instead kind of stick a pin in it as something concerning that we want to watch. So presently, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just run the GFS model as it is illustrated by Climate Reanalyzer, and I'm going to run the anomaly map first and then the straight surface temperature map. There's a few things I want to discuss about this trend. So this is a 10-day forecast. We are looking at the North Pole. Uh, directly above the North Pole region is right here. The Arctic Ocean region is in this circle here, and this circle defines the Arctic at the 66 degree north latitude line. So as you notice, the consistent above average temperatures over the Arctic Ocean itself remain in place throughout the forecast. But what we also see, which is concerning, are three regions of energy transfer into the Arctic over continental and ocean zones. The continental zones are over Eastern Siberia, where you see a lot of warm air transferring into the Arctic, that appears to be the primary zone. Another zone of warm air transfer is over the west, over Western North America. And if you were to look at the jet stream map, you would see ridge zones in both of these zones. And the third ridge zone is up through Europe, over the North Atlantic, east of Greenland, through the Barents Sea, and over Svalbard and that environment. So we've run through this forecast model once. What I'm gonna do is focus in on the end time frame, starting at around seven, five, five to seven days. So looking at Saturday, May 26th, so essentially one week from today, we see that the Arctic is nearly three degrees Celsius above normal, which is, is a very severe warming for this time of year. We don't typically see this kind of warming for the Arctic, and I'll, I'm gonna discuss that a little bit later, but, but I just wanna say that for this time of year, this is, this is excessive warming. So if we, if we do see this, it'll, It'll, it'll be historic. It'll be something that, that we, we probably haven't seen before for this time of year. So advancing from Saturday on into the longer range, we notice that the Arctic anomalies spike up to around 3.4 degrees Celsius above average for the entire Arctic region. And, and this, is, this is an extraordinary outlier for late May. Moving forward, we find that above average temperatures remain in place for at least in the, in the 2.9 to 3.4 degrees Celsius, to 3.5 degrees Celsius range for at least 72 hours. Now, how does this translate at the surface with regards to surface temperatures? And I'm just gonna go ahead and switch here. So what we see is that surface temperatures over the Arctic Ocean, over much of the Arctic Ocean, are predicted to be near freezing or above freezing. Anything in, in green on the other side of the white line here is above freezing temperatures. And usually you don't see above freezing temperatures of this kind until mid to late June at least over the Arctic Ocean. And as you can see, at nighttime, it cools off a bit for certain zones, but then with the return of daytime, especially over the East Siberian region, 
you have considerable warming over the Arctic Ocean, and, and particularly in the near Siberian region um, over, in, over here. So what we see is warm air moving up from the south, very warm air. These are temperatures up in the, in the 70s, uh, lower 80s in the high Arctic over the land masses through East Siberia and Alaska. And, and also into the, uh, the Scandinavian states here and telegraphing in through the Arctic Ocean, translating to above freezing temperatures for late May. I'm going to look at, so this is DM, uh, the Dutch, uh, sorry, Danish Meteorological Institute's analysis of present temperatures versus average temperatures in the high Arctic, and that's over the 80 degrees north latitude region. So the green line here are average temperatures for that region, and this is uh, the polar region. And the red line is temperatures compared to that average for 2018. And so what we've seen is that winter has been much warmer than normal, and as we've entered springtime, spring has been warmer than normal as well. Now, what we typically see is polar amplification tends to be stronger during wintertime, and that temperature averages tend to revert to the mean as we get into summer. So if you start to see temperatures well above average in the May through, say, October time frame, then that presents a, a bit of a problem for summer melt season in the Arctic, it, it tends to have a greater effect on Arctic sea ice melt come in season. And if we were to see a, a three degrees Celsius temperature departure, say here, in this range that, that pushes the A North region to above freezing early in June or late in May, that would be a, a serious acceleration to the start of melt season in, in one of its critical time periods. So I'm going to look at something else uh, just to give you guys a caveat here. So what we've seen in the GFS model series for the Northern Hemisphere is that predictions have run ahead of temperatures, meaning that the models have predicted warmer temperatures than have actually appeared in the models since May 1st. Now we have seen warmer than normal temperatures regardless in the northern hemisphere zone. But, but the models are, are running a bit hotter than what we've actually seen. So, so this is one reason why we can kind of take the GFS model run presently with a bit of a grain of salt. So even though we've seen warmer than normal temperatures, they haven't run quite as warm as predicted. So it's, it's possible that we'll see warmer than normal temperatures over the coming 10 days, but that they might not hit as high as, as what we're concerned about. Now, it's possible that, that we could see such extraordinary warm temperatures over the Arctic, which is one of the reasons why I'm bringing it to your attention. I also just want to say that, that this analysis of mine is not a forecast, it's just an analysis of present GFS model dynamics and a statement that if this forecast ends up being correct, then we will see historic record warmth in the Arctic in late May, and that is a serious concern. 